Good morning, everyone. My name is Laura Cunningham Chaplet. I'm the Executive Director at the Edmonton Federation of Community Leagues. I'm putting together this video to walk you through the re new reporting process for the Community League Operating Grant, or the CLOG. I'm also going to host four Ask Me Anything sessions, so please join me if you can. The link to register will be in the description below. If you're watching this video on IGTV, the link will be in our bio. As always, you can reach out to us at any time by email, phone, or DM us on social media. We're here to help. All right, let's get started. So, first of all, you would have received an email in your inbox on uh, Monday, January 10th, in the evening at about 8 o'clock. It will look something like this. Now, in this email, the first, the first place is that I want you to start is here. We gave information about what's changing with the reporting, why it's changing, and that's due to the new tripartite license agreement. And you can find information on that if you click on that link there. As you scroll down a little bit further, you're going to see a link for the form and you're going to see a link for the checklist. I want you to start on the checklist first. So we're going to click on that. And it's going to take you to a list of all of the things that you're going to need before you start your operating grant. Now, this is all the same information that you would have had to uh, provide before for the operating grant through the city. It's the same operating grant you are reporting on your 2021 year. And so this is the information that is required. We need the name of the league, the name of the person filling out the application, your annual return, some meeting information, who's on your board of directors, um, some information about your finances, your financial report. Then we need some program information. How many programs did the league run last year in 2021? We know that this has been a very different year. So let us know how things went. Be honest. It helps us to support you better. How many people attended? How many participants attended? And then were there any programs that the league hired out another organization to run? How many did you have of those? Um, what were they? And how many participants? We need to know about your volunteers. We need to know about your memberships. How many did you sell? How many families? How many individuals? And do you have other types of memberships? Your facilities and amenities. Again, this is something uh, that would have been reported last year. How many hours did you use it for programs? How many hours for rentals? Now, these questions at the end of the here, number five to eight, are new questions. They are optional this year. And we're going to let you decide if you can answer them for us. Next year, they will be mandatory, but we thought we'd include them this year, just so that you and the board can begin to think about these questions. And if you have any questions of us at the EFCL, we'd be happy to answer them. Because the information that we collect through this operating grant helps the EFCL to understand all the work that you're doing and to help tell that story, not only to Edmontonians, but to our city councillors and to city administration. So once you feel confident that you have all of the information in this checklist, you can go back to that email. Again, that was sent on Monday, January 10th. And there'll be a link that says form. So you click on that link. And it will take you to the form where you can begin to enter the information. Again, it'll be best if you have all the documents handy all your numbers ready to go and you can feel free to put them in your checklist directly and you just get started it's going to walk you through each question now i want to make sure that you're aware that once you start this it has to be one person on their one computer um, or device that enters in the information um, that way it'll auto populate every time that you go back in and you've got two weeks to do that after that point the auto population doesn't work anymore so you'll have to start again. And I don't want any of you to be in that position. So I want you to make sure that once you start, you finish it in two weeks. So set a reminder in your calendar on your phone, just so you know how much time you have to fill it in. 
we know that this is a new process. We know that this isn't perfect. We're going to make sure that we keep working on this to get this to be the best process possible. These questions are going to guide you through each step of the way. So which community league are you filling this out for? And for instance, I'll just put test here. What's your first name? Well, my first name's not Jonathan, but you can tell maybe who was the last person on mine here. And it'll walk you through each of these pieces. Once you've done it once, it will keep auto-populating for you. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to reach out to our league support email address or attend the Ask Me Anything. I'm having a couple of those at the end of January and a couple in mid-February. We would like all of this information collected by the end of February so that we can ensure we can share that information with the city in a timely way so that you can get your funding this spring as soon as possible. If you have any more questions, we hope to hear from you. Take care and have a great day.